Before we get into this new style ratchet tap wrench, let's start with a quick look at the different types of taps and how they're typically used. Here we've got a set of hand taps. These are very common in the hobby shop, usually used with a simple tap wrench. Now the catch with hand taps is that they don't manage swarf very well. That means you have to regularly back them off to break the chip. For this reason, hand taps aren't really suited for power tapping. The flutes can get clogged and that often leads to breakages. Machine taps have largely replaced them. They're versatile. You can still run them by hand in a tap wrench, but they're also designed to run continuously under power without swarf issues. If you're buying new taps today, machine taps are usually the way to go. There are two main types. Spiral point taps, ideal for through holes. Spiral flute taps, designed for blind holes. For holding them, collet systems are available, but in general shop work, a drill chuck does just fine. Here's a spiral flute tap running under power on a centre lathe. The tailstock is left unlocked, which allows the tap to naturally guide itself into the hole concentrically. There are also spring-loaded holders. This one here is a homemade three morse taper with a quick-release collet. On the mill, this spiral point tap is threading a through hole under power in a drill chuck. Again, the quill is left unlocked to guide the tap straight into the hole. Floating holders like this one are also useful, especially in cases where the quill can't be pulled down, for example when using a worm drive. T-bar and ratchet tap wrenches can also be used on a mill with a guide cone in the chuck. Now, if there's a slight misalignment, don't worry. The tap will still cut a straight concentric thread. It might start a little tapered, but as the tap bites deeper, it naturally straightens up. Conventional T-type ratchet wrenches can work too, but there's a limitation. Every time you back off to break the chip, you need to reverse the ratchet. And for lots of shallow holes, nothing beats a pistol drill for speed. It's a quick way to process a batch efficiently. That brings us to this new design. This tap wrench stays fully locked during normal operation, but adds a twist, a ratcheting clutch that responds instantly to handle pressure. Here's how it works. 
With a conventional ratchet, you're limited to one direction. That makes it awkward when you need to reverse for chip breaking or removal. In this design, the clutch automatically engages when you apply downward pressure to the handles. When you want to reverse, you simply ease off the pressure. The clutch disengages and the tap can rotate in the opposite direction instantly. Here are a few variations of the mechanism I've worked through. Each has the same goal, easy, reliable and intuitive tapping. Now here's a quick tool making tip for neater tapped holes. When making assemblies that may need repairs or adjustments, toolmakers often add a counterbore at the top of tapped holes. In this example, I'm cutting M8 by 1.25 threads. The spot drill is 8 millimeters, and I've added a counterbore of about 2 threads. The required depth is calculated as the drill radius plus 2 pitches, in this case 6.5 millimeters. A chamfer gauge helps find the theoretical point. The knee DRO is set to zero, and then I raise it by 56.5 millimeters, accounting for the 50 millimeter height gauge. After tapping and chamfering as usual, the result is a nice clean counterbore. This not only protects the thread tops, but also helps screws locate quickly and cleanly. Notice here how the holes are offset, ensuring the parts can't be reassembled incorrectly. I tend to use dowels one size up from the screws, in this case 10 millimeters.
And here you can see it in action. The screws drop neatly into the counter bores, pulling the plates into alignment, while the dowel chamfers naturally find the reamed hole chamfers. It's a small detail, but it makes assembly and reassembly a lot easier and neater. <laughs> 